Hello everybody, it's good to be with you again. My name is Margaret and I'm one of the children and families team at St John's Church. I know that some of you will be learning in school and some of you will be learning at home at the moment. But I hope wherever you are listening to this assembly that you enjoy it. Do you know what a leader is? Perhaps when you're in school, you have someone who is the leader at the front of the line to go from your classroom into assembly. Or if you're outside on the playground, to lead everybody back inside at the end of play. Sometimes you might be the leader in a PE lesson or you might be the leader if you're out on a walk. Have you ever played a game called Follow My Leader? It's a great game to play. It's very easy. You can play it indoors or out and you don't need any special equipment. Just someone to play with. Sometimes when you're playing Follow My Leader, it's the oldest person who goes at the head of the line. Sometimes it's the youngest, sometimes it's the tallest or the smallest. And sometimes you just take it in turns to choose who will go first. The idea of the game is that the leader walks around and changes the direction that they're going, or maybe waves a hand in the air, or perhaps does a little twirl, or adds a hop or a skip or a jump in their walk. The next person will then try and do something a little bit different. And everybody else who is following the leader has to try and do what the person in front of them is doing. They have to try and copy it exactly. It is great fun and something that you can play with your family or with your friends. Now the story that I'm going to tell you today is about Jesus. And Jesus was a leader and he had lots of people following him. For Christians, Jesus was God's special son and today, millions of people all over the world follow Jesus as their leader. The last time we had a story about Jesus was before Christmas. And it was about Mary and Joseph, his parents, getting ready for him to be born. It was about angels sending messages to people, a beautiful bright star, about shepherds, ordinary people going to visit this new special baby and eventually some wise men from the east bringing very valuable gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. The story today is about Jesus but it's much later, it's now he's a grown-up The stories can be found in the Christian holy book, the Bible. It's in two parts. There's the Old Testament, which tells you a lot about the history and how the world was made. And the New Testament, the new part, which tells you about Jesus and about his friends, what they did and where they went. Now, when Jesus grew up, he knew that God had a special task for him to do. But he couldn't do it all by himself. He wanted to have some special friends with him. He wanted to have friends who could help him with the work, to follow him, to do the kind of things that he did. And so Jesus decided that he would look for special friends to help. 
he prayed to God and asked him to show him who he should choose to be with him for this task. Now you might have noticed I've got a fish here. Fish are very good at swimming after their fishy leaders. And some of Jesus's friends that he chose first were fishermen. In fact, two of them were mending their fishing nets. They used to throw the nets out over the side of the boat to catch the fish and bring them to shore. But obviously, when they were working hard like that, sometimes the nets got damaged. So these two men were busy mending their fishing nets. They were on the shore of a big lake, Lake Galilee. It's such a big lake that it looks like a sea. And in some stories, it's called the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was walking by the side of the lake. When he looked at the men, he said, come with me. I can make sure you have a bigger catch. The two men, Peter and Andrew, were a little bit surprised. Maybe they thought that this stranger was going to show them where to get more fish or where the best place to catch them. But that's not what Jesus meant. He wanted Peter and Andrew to help him catch people. Not in a fishing net, not with ropes or anything else, but by showing them what God could do. They walked on for a little while and he then found James and John. And he said to them, come with me. Follow me. They didn't argue. They must have been a bit puzzled. But there was something about Jesus that made them want to follow him. That helped them to trust him as their leader. Jesus wanted more people. There were four of them and him. But he knew that the work that he had to do would need lots of people. They came across a man called Matthew. Now Matthew was a tax collector. At the time Jesus and his friends were alive, the Romans were in charge in his country. As they were in many places in the world. And the Romans needed taxes, they needed money to make the roads, to pay the army, and to give back to the emperor. Matthew was helping the Romans, so he wasn't very popular with the people around him. Mainly because he sometimes charged a little bit too much tax and kept some for himself. Jesus said to him, come with me, follow me. Don't be a tax collector for the Romans anymore. Come with me. And Matthew did. Some people thought that was a bit strange. But Jesus knew, because God had told him, that Matthew was going to be one of his very special helpers. So now... There was Peter and Andrew and James and John and Matthew. But that still wasn't quite enough. Jesus prayed to God and then he chose seven more people. Thomas and Philip, Bartholomew, Thaddeus and another James. Simon and Judas. And now 
Jesus was the leader of 12 special disciples, messengers. They went on to have many adventures together and to help tell people what God wanted them to do. Jesus, as their leader, explained to them many things, how to treat people, how to not be greedy, how to pray. Christians believe that Jesus is their leader. And today, across the world, there are millions of people who follow him. So just like those first special friends, just like following a leader in a game, people trusted Jesus and still do today. I'm going to say a prayer now. And if you would like to make it your prayer, say Amen at the end. Father God, we pray for all the leaders in our world. For the leaders of our country, for the Queen, for our teachers, for our Vicar Ruth. We pray that they can be wise and kind. And we thank you, Lord, for Jesus, the leader who with his friends showed people the way to come to God. Amen. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that you have a lovely time learning at school or learning at home. I'll see you again very soon.